Okay, modeler, so I've got a little bit of a treat going today. Uh, I've got a friend in the model club who bought this kit second hand for $55, as you can see up here, so he got it for a bargain. Uh, I haven't been actually able to afford many new kits lately, so this friend in the club knows I do these videos, and he said, you can have this to do a review, and I want you to build it, uh, but he wants to do the painting and weathering and stuff. So it's an absolute treat for me to be able to do this because it's one of those kits I would have bought anyway um, and just been able to you know review it and build it with, without having to pay for it is an absolute treat so guys I hope you enjoy this video I know I'm really going to enjoy the build on this as well so I'm going to do an inbox review first and I'll attach that to the build video as well at the beginning of the build video so this one here is our heavy battle tank, the World War One, the female version uh, from Tackham. Now Tackham has brought out some beautiful stuff lately some, and some really different stuff. And I mean, it's for, for years and years we've been begging for, you know, these World War One armor tanks, like some decent versions of them. And now we're flooded with them. There, there's just, you know, some beautiful kits on the market. I mean, Meng's done some. There's some with full interiors and everything. So absolutely awesome. From everything I understand, this is supposed to be a really nice kit. So as you see, the box art, is like just you know different angles of the tank both sides or the side top front and back sort of thing um, really nice it gives you a really good idea what the piece of armor is all about uh, on the side here it's a lovely little picture here and obviously we'll have to look in the instructions as we go through this but you can actually have plates off and you can see all your drive wheels and chain and stuff on the side here so you may actually have the option of having those covers off and be able to actually see a little bit of interior in this same with the machine guns maybe you can have a plate off there showing the machine guns uh, but I don't think there's much else interior wise so we'll have to wait till we open the kit and go through and see what's actually in there and on the other side here we've got all our sprue call outs and a cover of our instruction book so anyway guys we shall open her up now and we'll have a look at all the goodies inside. Okay, so first up we have got our instruction book by a little bit and this one has actually been cut open this packet so we'll take him out and we'll have a look. Okay, so it's a nice sort of thick cardboard cover on this so it's not going to actually um, like rip and tear too easy which is good. And it, it's, it's good to see when they have these nice solid sort of covers on these things you can cover them up. Okay, so inside we have just a few things here about applying the decals, uh, a bit of a list of the paint colours that you're going to need, um, yeah, and just how to remove the, the photo etch parts from the sprue there. Then we've got our sprue call outs on this page, and then we start our build over here. So it looks like the first thing we have is our machine guns going in there into the housings, uh, then it looks like the top and the bottom, front and back, all sort of go together. Um, which is, yeah, it's a little bit odd how that all goes together and there's no sides on it yet, but um, I take it there's an interior side and an exterior side, but we'll see that as we go through. Uh, then we've got our tow hitches going on here, exhaust system going together on that page, and over here we've got some of the, the gear going on at the top, the exhaust system running over the top there. Uh, I'm not sure that plate there looks like some sort of housing for something, oh, it must be an exhaust cover, the main exhaust cover. And then we're starting to put our boxes together for the front and back, and they go together in a few pieces here, as you can see. Uh, just looking at the instructions here, it looks like there's some nice detail, all the riveting and bolt, bolt heads and stuff are on it. Uh, then we've got the start of the interior of the walls here going together, some of our dry sprockets. And here's our chain and sprockets going together over here, with your different paint call-outs and that. And then the opposite side. Then these are the actual outside plates, and just again looking at the instructions, they look really nice. Looks like some really nice detail on them, but we'll see that when we pull the parts out. Uh, all their wheels going together here. Then our tracks. Uh, looks like there's a there's a plate here to make your tracks up, so the individual track links, which is good. Uh, even though these ones are pretty well stretched out over the tracks, there's not a lot of sag and that in them to pose them, but it's still good to have those individual tracks. If you want to have one broken and hanging, you can do that. Um, yep, more drive gear going on the opposite side. So it looks like both sides you've got the, the option to have that open to show all that drive gear going on there. Um, and again this must be the opposite side for our tracks going together and then here we have our machine guns going together. 
this is your main machine gun turrets that sit in the side walls. Um, so it looks like some really nice detail on those. Be, it's going to be a shame, they're going to be covered up because you've got a housing here that goes over the top and they're going to be covered up. But maybe you could, if you want to, you can probably cut those panels, open them up so you can see inside and have a look. Um, and they get put together, those turrets get put together separately as you can see on this page here, they're completely separate to the rest of the build. So, and then they, the outside walls go onto the main base and then your turrets go on there as well. <clears throat> having a look at this one here, it looks like there's quite a few holes to drill down here. And then all our finishing touches, our chains and stuff, it's got um, instructions over here for doing your chains um, and how to make them up. We've got a little figure here by the look of it that goes in there as well with his little camera. That's a really cool touch. I love when they add little things like that. And then we've got our markings. Uh, looks like we've got a couple of different versions of markings here. Um, but like I say, I'm not going to be painting this one guy. Someone else is going to be doing that. The guy who actually owns the kit's going to be doing that. And we have a correction sheet here. So obviously they had something wrong in the instructions. Make sure you put this, I'll put that into the actual instruction booklet there on the page where um, that is supposed to be. So we don't sort of get that mixed up. We'll just zoom the camera in a little bit, guys, so we can see in the box one going through it. Uh, there's our markings there and our bits of chain, some photo etch going on there as well. We won't worry about taking those out. And here we have, I'll just put my goggles on guys so I can see what I'm actually talking about here. And these are all our wheels. There's our drive chains and that on the sprockets there. And they look absolutely beautiful. Actually really nice moulding on those. You can really see the individual links and that on them. Very nice. So that's something you can actually have opened up. It'd be nice to have that opened up to see one of those dry sprockets. Uh, but we'll see how we go with the build. Uh, these are parts from our machine guns up here. They're very nicely moulded as well, guys. Obviously a seam line where the join goes around there. But um, it's just some really nice detail in there. All our um, U-clamp, all our um, tow hitches and things like that. There's our magazines for the machine guns. Again, very nicely moulded. And here we have obviously the top, the bottom, um, our guards and things like that. And the, the rivet detail, the great big bolt heads are beautiful. Um, I, I've seen the actual real tanks uh, photos of them and they were big standout, big thick heavy bolts like that. So they're not actually overdone, they, they probably look like it in their scale, but they actually were great big thick heavy bolts. I mean they had to be, they were supposed to withstand some pretty powerful fire. So. Um, yeah, some really nice detail there. Yeah, a few little cover, well, your little hole inspection holes with our little flip plates on them. They're all moulded in there as well. Very nice. And here we have this must be the outside boxes that are going together on these pieces. Again, all that rivet detail is all built in there, guys. Very, very nice. Uh, just ignore the sound of the plane taking off the background, guys. It happens here. I'm next to an airport, so. Yeah, you saw we've got some wheel housing stuff going on there. Very nice our exhaust system up here. Uh, exhaust system is very plain, but I guess they were. They weren't actually sort of over detailed or anything, but that, it's nicely moulded. Parts like this is so long, this big piece up the top here. You have to be very careful, I guess, cutting that away from the sprue so you don't break it. It's just going to be something to be very careful with. Here's all their running wheels. Uh, looks like the shafts and everything there to put them all together. Um, there's quite a few there, it's going to take a bit of clean up because I can see where they're attached to the sprues, fairly thick sort of attachments there, they'll have to be trimmed off very carefully so you don't put big nicks inside the running wheels and that. But they look quite nice guys for what they are. And here's machine gun housings like our, our turret covers and things like that, they go together in a few pieces and the outside box is going together there as well. Again that beautiful detail with little inspection flip plates and stuff like that are all moulded in there. Um, again the rivet detail is just gorgeous. There's, there's the big thick ones and then there's finer ones. Some of you can see rivets and some of them are actually bolt edge. You can see the hexagonal shapes on them. So very very nice there guys. And here's our tracks. And oh my god. There's a big stack of them. I think these are the tracks I don't really like doing either. You put the, the two sides links together and then these glue over the top like the Meng um, dozer tracks. I think they're going to be a bit painful to do these but uh, we'll have to wait and see how it goes because there is a guide plate in here to put them together on so I hope they won't be too bad. But um, oh, what was there? One, two, three, five sprues full of them in there so 
quite a bit of work in that guys and then we have these are our side plates these are things i've been waiting to have a look at absolutely beautiful look at the detail that's built into these guys i'm, I'm hoping you can pick this up on the camera absolutely beautiful all the bolt heads are actually in the right sizes like some are bigger some are smaller um, you can see the hexagonal shape on some of them very very nice and even i think we're just looking for where they need to have them holes ruled out i'm not sure maybe it's to do with putting the, the uh, doors and uh, the, the actual hatches and things on there but you've got your inside and outside plates uh, the inside plates obviously you've got their detail built in there as well um, you've got your panel engravements going on there absolutely beautiful stuff guys I'm really really looking forward to building this thing because it's just it's one of those awesome looking beasts from the past that you know you just don't see in real life anymore this is the closest you're probably going to get unless you go to a museum but really looking forward to doing this build and looking at the parts and the instructions looks like it's going to be a very nice build guys so anyway that's that's probably about all i can tell you by just going through the box guys um i will get on with the build pretty much straight away on this one and hopefully get it done in the next few weeks although i am a bit tied up at the moment i'm um i'm actually in the midst of organizing our model show here in Mackay. Um, so I'll see how I go and hopefully I'll, I'll get this done in the next couple of weeks guys and we'll, and we'll get the build up there but like I say there's no painting on this one I'm just going to build it, pass it back to the guy who owns it, he wants to do the paintings Okay modelers, so the first thing I'm doing, I'm going through the instructions and this is the correction sheet that came in the box as well so what I'm doing, these are actually all on different pages so step one, uh, the only difference I could see in that step there was they actually show you a picture of the completed box on here where they don't in the actual instructions so that's fine, I don't need to do that. But step 14, 26 here, um, I put a red dot, so that just tells me that at that step there, I've got to go to the correction sheet to see what's in there. The only thing I can see different there is the saying not to use glue to glue that part on there. Uh, I'm not sure why, obviously something must turn or spin there so you don't have glue on it. Um, but anyway, I'll put a red dot in there and what that does is, so when I get to that point, I know to look at the correction sheet to make sure I don't make any mistakes. And I'll do that with each step as I go through. We go through, put a red dot on these correction sheets. Um, that way you don't sort of miss it. I actually thought this was just one page in here somewhere, but it's not. These are just different steps throughout the booklet. So, um, I mean, you can actually cut them out, put them on the pages if you want. But I find it just much easier to put a, a reminder, like a red dot, to let you know at that step to look back at that sheet. Then you guys will keep getting on with this and uh, I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay, model, it's just a bit of a quick um, a quick tip here. I guess it's just a tip. Um, if I can get this to focus for you guys. Pieces like this, and I take it's going to be the same for a lot of the pieces, there's actually no like locator pins or anything like that to line all these sides up. Now this went together in what, one, two, three, four pieces. Um, and there was nothing to locate the pins. You just had to sort of put it there, hold it in place, glue it. Um, so be very very careful with these parts and there is slots underneath and I tend to glue from the inside Once I got them together just sort of cut little touches of glue to get them together and then I glue it from the inside uh, So you don't have glue running around the outside and you're trying to sort of push it in place If you glue it from the outside you're going to end up with fingerprints all over it So uh, if you glue it from the inside you shouldn't put too much glue on there if it runs on the outside you'll end up with fingerprints but just use a little bit of glue on the inside and sort of push it together get it all lined up and without the locator pins you've got, got to actually use your eye um, look at it from all the different angles make sure there's no sides that are sort of out of whack or anything like that now even with my, my goggles on I can see that this top plate you can see where the two plates meet now there is supposed to be a seam there because they are separate plates but it looks a little bit uneven so what I'll do I'm just going to use the knife to sort of scrape some little bits down there's a couple little bits that are a little bit high a um, couple little bits of tabs hanging off there so I'll just clean those up very very gently like that and that's going to focus again but just be very very careful putting them together guys because if you get these out of whack and you go to put the whole thing together nothing's going to line up so just take your time make sure they're all nice and square there was a big gap along the front here where the two plates met um, I had to sort of push those together I'm going to have to like scribe a little seam down there because they are separate plates but um, yeah, just be careful when you do this. And the other thing is, when you're trimming them away from the sprue, see they've got a little gap up in there, and another one over here, that's where it was attached to the sprue. And the cutters that I used 
were blunt and it actually nipped the plastic out. So I'm going to have to actually uh, fill those once I put it onto the, the main assembly. I'm going to fill those in so you won't actually notice those little nips. But it's just something to be careful of when you cut the parts away from the sprue. Cut them a little bit further away and just trim them back with your knife and then sand them back so they're nice and square and you don't get those little sort of nip marks out there that you have to fix up later on. But so far guys, it's a beautiful little kit. It's going together really nicely. We've got our machine gun mounted in the front hatch here. Now this one here, it is movable. Uh, I sort of put just a tiny bit of white glue in there to hold it in place because what happens if you don't glue it, the gun's actually sagging downwards and it just yeah, it looks awful. So I we'll put a little bit of white glue in there so it's still a little bit springy, you can move it around. Uh, I don't want to move it too much while it's still wet, but um, yeah, just be careful of that. The inside here with the inside of the machine gun, you're not actually going to see that because it's all going to be inside, so it's only the main on the outside you have to see. And also there's a big seam line that runs down the middle of that machine gun, so be careful with that too. Make sure you clean that off. But anyway guys, I'll keep getting on and I'll turn the video back on at the next step. Okay, model. so we're sort of coming along here now. I've got the, uh, the top, bottom and front and back all sort of together. Now, you have to be very careful with these fits because like I say, there's no locating pins but there is sort of slots and um, slats to sort of line it up, but even that is a little bit out of plumb. So you have to sort of fiddle around with a little bit, do a lot of dry fitting. Uh, I had to do a little bit of sanding and filing to get everything to sort of line up, but it has come together okay. And there's a couple little spots there I've marked in black pen that I have to actually sort of fill in a couple little gaps that are in there, but I will fill those in with a little bit of putty later on. Um, just something I wanted to show you on here. I just got to get this to focus nice and close for you and hopefully you'll be able to see this or get something to point with uh, the file will do you can see here we've got injector pins there 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 and there and they're going to be very very noticeable guys they're, they're they're not exactly small and they really stand out so what i'm going to do is get a sharp knife in there and pluck them out and then get a little bit of sandpaper folded over and get in there and rub them out just to get rid of those but it's things like that guys these little parts, like most times you don't get that, but it's very unusual. I've got injector pin marks, like four big ugly ones right there in the center of that piece. And it's going to be up on top of the tank, so you definitely will see it. So it's something you have to look for in all these parts. Get rid of those, otherwise once you put an overcoat on this, once you paint it, they're going to really stand out. So anyway guys, that was just a quick tip, and uh, I'll keep it on the build, and I'll see you in the next shot. Okay, modelers, so we're up to the point now, I've got the inner and outer wall um, like together and as you see there's, there's a little bit of work in this you have to read the instructions very very carefully guys because if you don't get this right um, some of the parts don't fit correctly and it's very complex putting these two pieces together there's actually as you see here we've got the outer wall going on to the inner wall you've got to line those up and at the same time you've got to put all the running gear all the way around for the tracks and if you don't get these things set in there correctly it's not going to line up and it's going to be a little bit of an issue like trying to do all the running wheels and stuff at the same time as putting those on plus you have your front and back wheels which I'll put up here so you can see them these guys now that front one goes in here and you can actually drive that cog around down the front here um, so if you if you read the instructions carefully you shouldn't have any problems but I sort of went through a little bit too quick the first time and I got a couple of things wrong so one of the things I do as a trick, I just put like little pins of glue down when I first put parts in and as I go on, if, if all the other parts fit around it correctly, then I put more glue on. But if it doesn't fit correctly, I can always sort of pull it out and replace it um, just in case, you know, like if I got it wrong, it's easy to pull it out if you've just got a couple little dabs of glue on there. Um, there's one part that I did put in back the front when I wanted to put the outer wall and I realised it was, it was around the wrong way. But honestly, if you read your instructions carefully, you won't have that same issue that I had. Um, the other thing is some of these parts don't have glue on them. The idea of that is they can have these cogs turning. Um, I'm thinking that the tracks may be movable as well. I've got to see how they go together yet, but if, if they're not sort of glued together, um, hopefully they'll be a little bit poseable. But when I get to that step, I'll sort of turn the camera back on and let you know. But so far, it's, it's not too bad fit issue-wise. There's a couple of places like you can see you've got the raised parts and the recessed parts here and then you've got the slots in this, this piece up here where they fit. These raised parts seem to be a little bit too high and wouldn't allow the, the inside to sort of fit down flush, so you have to sort of sand those back a bit. 
and make sure you sand even down on the lower parts as well you might have um, little bits that are sort of sticking up a little bit but just take your time dry fit everything um, and like I say the fit issues aren't too bad that there's a couple of little tiny issues but as modelers we, we work our way around those things that's why we dry fit everything but so far really really enjoying this kit guys and as it's coming together I'm just loving it more and more so anyway guys I'll keep going on with this I'll put this one whole side together we'll turn the camera back on and show you how that turned out okay guys I'll see you in the next step okay modelers just forgive the noise outside I've got someone mowing next door so it might be a little bit noisy and there's also some of the nail gum on the other side so if you hear any noises just please forgive that so as you see I'm sort of moving along here now I'm putting the first side on there now I did manage to get this piece together uh, with all the wheels in here like I was showing you earlier all the wheels are stuck in underneath there now to do that what I had to do is sort of glue the underside on first like one side of the wheels and glue them in place standing straight up then put the other plate on and move individually one at a time till they went into the little holes to get it to seat down properly it is a real pain to do but um, take your time guys because if you don't do it correctly if you, if you don't take the time to do it it's going to be all buckled and skew if you'll, you'll even break little axles and that they're very delicate in there so take your time um, line them up push them in one at a time get it to seat down and just I went around put little dabs of super glue just to pin it in place now to put that side then onto the hole as you can see I've got some clamps on there because there is quite a bit of a like up the side here if it's not dead flat you'll get little sort of seams and stuff like that so I've sanded it down I've done a bit of filing and stuff so it's not too bad but if I don't have those in there it is actually going to want to pull away from the the centerpiece so I've got those clamps on there to get that to set nice and nice and flat to the surface if you've got any gaps on there it's going to be a real nightmare to fill them in and it just won't look right just be aware there is a little bit of a raised lip up onto the top plate compared to the side plate um, the other thing I'm a bit concerned about is where the tracks are going to lie inside there and you know how I'm going to adjust the tracks because I'm building this for someone else to paint I don't know that I can put the tracks on there um, simply because I'm sure he's going to want to paint this without the tracks on it um, if it was me I'd probably put them on and then paint around it um, and lift them off when I needed it like I'll have one there that's not actually glued together I can dismantle it and take them off but if they're movable um, I'll put them together and I'll have them aside but I'm just going to have to see how they go together and how they're going to lie when I put them in there um, anyway guys I'm going to keep it on with the video I'll put the other side together and put it on as well uh, obviously I'll have to clamp that side as well um, and I'll turn the camera back on when I'm doing the machine gun mounts for inside here because they, they'll be actually protruding out the side here with two machine guns one front one back um, so when I'm putting those pieces together which fit into that housing um, I'll turn the camera back on at that stage okay model it's just a quick tip here you can see this band that's up over the top here now in the instructions it says to put it on before you put the sides on the on the actual hull itself I actually recommend you put this on afterwards uh, if you put it on beforehand it's going to be something else you can sort of knock around and break off and stuff like that especially when you have to clamp those sides on to get them to sit properly now uh, it's just something I realized I, I, I thought that before I'd done it and I, I tried it so I put the sides on then I put that rail over the top and it was much easier to do it afterwards and you can get it to line up much better too and um, just go over and like glue one point at a time and get them to sit in there uh, just a quick tip anyway guys and I'll keep going see you in the next part okay modelers so I'm up to the point now I've got both the sides on there uh, obviously the gun turrets have to go on the sides yet they're all put together in small pieces I'll bring one over here so you can see it up there you can see that's the turret sorry about the shakes here guys um, so they have to be put together yet and put into the sides but so far it hasn't been a bad build uh, the only problem I had like I was saying putting all those runner wheels in there getting it to all sit flush I had to use clamps over both sides to hold them all together to make sure everything fits nice and snug but um, she's really looking the part now this so far like I say really nice kit guys except for trying to get all those wheels in there it's not that it's a bad fit issue or anything like that but you just got to be careful with them the other thing is you find out that they pop the little the little heads pop through here um, if they don't pop through you're never going to get those sides flush against the wheels so just be careful with that make sure they do all pop into place when you when you hold it okay models so the point we're up to now with our um, world war one tank here 
What I ended up doing, I was trying to work with the tracks that come with the kit, but they, honestly, they were the worst tracks I've ever worked with in my life. And the way they're set up, you just, I just couldn't get them to line up properly, and they just kept being like, you know, one track would be, well, it's sort of hard to explain, but one, one track would be like that, and then the next one would be off to an angle like that, and just, it was just, they were just so hard to work with, I just gave up. Um, ended up getting these guys here, and they are from Tackham, the same people who make the tank. And they actually click together, you don't need glue, and they're movable as well. And I think they were $20 so I got them for, um, that's 20 Australian dollars. And honestly, they're probably the most beautiful tracks I'll work with. They just, there's hardly any cleanup. The only bit of cleanup I found on there, I'll try and get this to focus for you. You might be able to see there's a little white dot right in the middle there, on that top part of the runner. That sands out a little bit, it's a little nip. Just give it a bit of sandpaper or just rub it off. And that's it, that's the only clean up you need on these. And when you click them together, all they are is, I'll get two up here, and hopefully this will focus for you. I need to put my goggles on. This is at a weird angle, guys, so please forgive me if this goes a little bit astray. But hopefully you can see this. There's two pins and two holes you've got to line up. And just click them into place like that, and then they're movable. Like so, absolutely beautiful. They're really, really easy to work with. So I'm going to get these together fairly quick. It's not going to take long at all to get these done. Um, I'll do both sides, and then I just got a few pieces to finish it off. Um, one of them is just like the the bits that go over your tracks, over the top of the tank, sort of like top guards and things like that. Um, a few other little odds and ends, like the chains that hang off the back with the block, and that should be pretty much finished then, guys. Um, yeah, and when, it, when I've actually got it finished, I'll turn the camera back out and I'll show you around it and talk a few, a few, a few of the few little things that I sort of probably would have done a bit different if I was doing the tank again um, and talk about some of the issues that we had and some of the good stuff that comes with it as well. But anyway, guys, I'll keep getting all these tracks and I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay, modelers, so we finished off with our World War One heavy tank here. And um, I think I've said it earlier in the video, but... This tank's probably not the best build I've ever had to do. Um, there's quite a few fit issues as far as trying to get the, the sides of the hull together. Where the tracks are here, these are actually made from two sides, as you've seen earlier. Um, they had to be clamped together to get them to line up. And then to put those actually on the tank, I had to clamp them as well because they just, I don't know, they seemed to be a little bit warped or something. They just didn't want to sit down flush. So I had to clamp it, get, get all that to glue. Um, some, of the, some of the tracks... Um, well actually all the tracks that I, I tried to do were just a disaster the, the tracks that come with this kit are absolutely horrendous so as you seen earlier I bought a set of um, tracks that come separate, they're plastic ones they cost $20 and they're also from Tackham so I don't know why they don't put those in with the kit because they are absolutely beautiful to work with um, the only thing I haven't got on there at the moment is the back rail here which has to be sort of all put together I'm doing this at a weird angle guys so just forgive me but it's got a couple of little spaces there to hold it up and those chains go over there and hook on as well but I'm leaving that off because the guy who owns this tank he wants to paint it and I think it's going to be a lot easier for him to paint it with that off rather than trying to get around the chains and things like that um, all he's got to do is put one chain link on there just be warned the chain links are a real pain to work with you've got to open them up and rejoin them and all that sort of thing they, they're really really fiddly so make sure you've got some really good tweezers and things to hold them and muck around with them. Um, there's not much else I can really say about it. it. It definitely looks apart. It looks absolutely beautiful when she's all together. Um, really, really love this tank. Absolutely beautiful. The paddles on the tracks here, um, they're an option. You don't have to put those on. There's a few little options on the kit, but um, I sort of put everything on, you know, pretty much everything on. Um, yeah, there's not much else to say about it, guys. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing me mate paint this one up because it, it, it really does look the part. It's absolutely a beautiful looking kit when she's all done, but um, yeah, it's not the best kit to put together. I mean, it, it's still fun. I still enjoy doing it. It wasn't an absolute disaster. Like, I've built a lot worse kits, but I've definitely built a lot of better kits as well. Um, but, you know, for the money, I, I definitely would buy one because, you know, you haven't, you haven't got many other choices. You've got a few other choices out there now, but honestly for, for this actual particular model absolutely beautiful when she's together but anyway guys so i think that's about all i can say about the kit um i recommend it if you've got a bit of experience but if you're only new to putting kits together i'd give it a miss until you've got a bit of experience because there is a little bit of work in getting this thing together 
Oh, just one more thing too, the tracks um, don't sit down really flush to where they're supposed to, but I've left them loose at this stage, as you can see they're still moving around. Um, just so when my mate paints it, he can move them around. You can still detach them and put them back on there and all that sort of thing. Um, once he paints it, um, he can probably glue them down in place to make them sit all flush and everything. So anyway guys, that's about all I can say about the kit. Um, as always, uh, make sure you sub below if you haven't subbed guys. Um, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, also, I've got some links down there where you can go to Amazon or that and buy these. Um, I may even have an eBay link down there as well where you can go and get it. Uh, but anyway guys, like always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.